please make sure that you're performing any synthetic or load tests against a website you have control over. I'm using commit quality because this is mine, but please don't use this one because it won't handle the load. Make sure you have authorization for whatever you're testing when you're looking to perform this kind of load and performance testing. Thank you and enjoy the video. This is Jared from commit quality. In today's video, we're going to go over the arguments we pass through as part of our playwright and artillery scripts. Just before we get started, you may want to watch my previous videos in this series so you can be in the same position I'm in with all the tests set up so we can start getting through with it. However, if you're just looking to understand the arguments passed through, then this will be a perfect video for you. So if I go to my login JS script, which is which is where we run our artillery code, the test login just uh, just as a simple go to commit quality, click the login button, fill in the username password, log in and make sure that the log out button is visible. Like I said, exactly the same we've done in previous videos, but if anyone's watching this fresh, that's all it's doing. And at the moment we have, we have just the page being passed through as part of this function. But what we can actually do is we can pass through a few other things. We can pass through a VU context, events, and even a test argument. And you might be wondering what all of these are, and let's talk through them. So the virtual user context and event arguments can be used for several different purposes. So the VU context, you can kind of access scenarios and environment variables for different virtual users. You can do that by passing through viewcontext.vars and this allows you to access specific environment and scenario variables. You can get the current virtual user ID. So I could do something like viewcontext vars dot, um, I believe it's dollar UUID. And you can also do things like getting the scenario definition for the scenario currently being run by the virtual user. And you can do that by view context. And then you can say uh, dot scenario. And that's going to include the name of everything for you. We're going to walk through an example of this now. I was just typing those out, so don't worry. I'm not just kind of skipping over this one. And then we also have the event argument here, which kind of I tie this in with the VU context. What we use events for is to track custom metrics. So what I can actually do is, let's say, um, output current metrics by incrementing a custom counter. So what I can say is I can use the events argument first. So I'll say events.emit. And here I can say, okay, I want to create a counter. So I'll say counter. And then tell what we'll do is we'll say, let's get the user um, scenario name. Let's do the scenario name because it's a nice easy one. So what I'll do is I'll say view context now dot scenario dot name has this amount of page load. So every time this view context um, has a page load, let's increase the counter by one. So that's going to create our custom metric for us. So when I run this script now, then we should see something say user dot whatever our scenario name was. So that's playwright. So we'll see user playwright dot page loads, and we'll have a counter increase in by how many page loads there have been. So let's run the script. Oh, and that hasn't worked. Let's have a look in. Oh, of course, because I thought engine was the name, but we don't have a name for this yet. So let's set a name. So let's say name, and tell you what, we'll say commit quality. So it stands out really nice. Let's clear this down and rerun it again. And now what we should see is commit quality is the name of the scenario, which will be output. There we are. Views is created by commit quality. So we can see it's got a name added to it now, which is great. And here you are, v users created by name commit quality, user dot commit quality dot page load. So there we are, we've added in here where it comes to us. And just to make sure you're happy that it goes, let's say subscribe, even though this does not make sense because we're trying to increment a custom counter for every time this not the user's been run. Let's just add it in so you can see that it is logging out as expected. So let's rerun that. There we are, user dot commit quality subscribe and user commit quality dot subscribe. So we we now output in these 
these custom metrics we can add to it and you can do whatever you want with this i would i would strongly suggest looking at the artillery documentation for all the different things you can do because we've just done a simple counter here but there's a lot more you can do with this and like i said there's a lot you can do with view context all we've done at the moment is gather the scenario name but we just talked about a bunch of different examples we can do so definitely have a look at the documentation or if you do have any questions on how we want to do something just drop a comment below i'm always happy to help with things and it's always good to have some engagement on my videos as well so definitely drop a comment so we've talked a little bit about view context and events but there's one more thing that we have that we have here which is test and this is the final argument of the function and this contains a step property and the step property is very similar to playwright's own test.step if you've ever used it where you can kind of reuse code but that's essentially what it allows you to do it allows you to reuse similar code but the purpose in artillery is slightly different test steps in artillery allow you to have the kind of custom metrics to represent how long each step takes so what i can do i'm just going to do something very simple uh, say a wait step and here i'm going to name it something so let's name it login because that's exactly what it should be it's of course an asynchronous function because we have the playwright code inside it. So in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the test login. And before I even execute this, I want us to look through. And there's nothing here for login. You've got the page commands where they go in. But what if I said, OK, I've got a bunch of code in here. So let me copy this. And let's say we have two bits of code and we want to check. So let's say second step. And we want to just, just do a console.log console.log um and let's put a number and let's just say subscribe so we've got two pieces of code here and we want to check the different metrics for this code and then whatever's in this block of code in this case just a console.log so we won't really do anything but what we'll see now is down here we'll have these custom metrics output so we won't just have each page we'll have them put into their own blocks for us to analyze so let's clear this just to make it nice and pretty and if i had artillery run on this you'll see now we'll have a login step and a second step oh i weren't looking clearly because that shouldn't be set priority that should be step and that should be step so let's clear that again and hit enter to run this step is not defined okay so i wonder what's happened here well it's basically telling us step has not been defined and that's because we haven't actually mentioned any. You can see test here hasn't done anything. I could say test.step, and I could say test.step, which would work completely fine. If I clear this down, that will work. You can see phase has started. Everything looking good. It's all running as expected now. But if you didn't want to do that, you can just set a constant above as well. You can say const step equals test and then what you can do is you can use the step again i wanted to show this just to show that you can't forget you need to be using these what you can see now is here we have second step has been output which is what we didn't have before and that's only analyzing the code inside here in this case just a console log so nothing's really gone on but if i go to login now you can see We've got this login step, which I've named up here. And we know it's this one because I've made it all capitals, but you can name it whatever you want. And it's given us the output just for that code inside this block, which becomes really useful when you want to start analyzing specific parts of your code or system. Of course, I didn't show you us running it with this constant instead of using test.step on here, but it works as expected on this as well. So that we are subscribes being output and as you can guess we're still going to see all the metrics including this login step and this second step of course we still have subscribe there because we've got this line of code but you've got second step login and like i said if i scroll up you've still got everything we had before definitely very useful you're going to be using these arguments so i thought we have to create a video around these just to show an example of what they're there for like i said if you do have any questions or comments please drop a co please drop them down below a like and subscribe is always appreciated i've also enabled super thanks on my videos so if you're finding these tutorials useful you can drop a super thanks that helps with the running of my channel on my website but as always thank you for watching 